Stephen, I would drive a hundred miles to listen to you say What a beautiful day. We're so blessed to be here in this atmosphere of love, are we not? And today we're going to continue, we're going to focus on the theme for the month, which is self-image, and then embracing our talents and embracing our divine gifts. And uh, if any of you watched the game last night, yesterday, Fresno State, you saw an example of people with a good self-image. <laughs> 61 to 14! <laughs> Woo! I'm, wow, it's pretty good, huh? Now, yesterday was my football game uh, day, and it was good Notre Dame. Did they win? Anybody know? They were ahead when I left. Uh, today I want to uh, start and kick this idea off with uh, an euphemism that I kind of like, one of my favorite ones, and most of you may have heard it. And it comes from the Hindu uh, spirituality. We are all, all of us, kings, falling victim to amnesia, wandering around <laughs> our kingdom in rags, not knowing who we are. That's what this month's about. It's how do we develop that idea of our awareness of our self-image and who we are. Uh, and so this one, we're going to be dealing with a lot of spiritual truths that will help us jar our memories a little bit and maybe help us break out of uh, unawareness and, and hopefully show us how important it is to develop an empowering self-image. So here we, be go here we begin. Uh, one of the... Uh, one of the universal truths that I really want to deal with today, in fact, I'm going to deal with a couple of them, is that and, and our outer experience tells us how we feel about ourselves. We need to process that. And the last time I mentioned that several years ago, I had several in the audience uh, take exception to it. What do you mean that, mm, that my outer experiences are telling me how I feel about myself? And so we had a nice session, and I think I came out ahead a little bit. <laughs> in, in New Thought, we say this. We said, if you want to experience something, anything, you have to be in, in consciousness first. Anybody agree with that? If I want to experience love, and I'm running around frowning and hateful, am I going to experience love? So my, my experiences do mirror. Uh, and Sandy and I had a good talk about mirror, and I'm going to steal your thunder. She's going to do it. I'm not going to do it today. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, we mirror up our beliefs, our inner beliefs of how we are. And uh, all sentient beings, I thought about this uh, this morning, all sentient beings except mankind, all of them, know that the principal business of life is to enjoy it. And I looked at my cat this morning. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. She would jump on where I'm trying to work, and she's, yeah, because she thinks the world is her playground. And if you look at the animals, uh, I mean, they're enjoying life. And how many of us do that? How many of us know? Uh, that this life is, was meant to live it and to enjoy it. Uh, and so today I'm coining a word, uh, I like to do that, uh, and you, you may have heard it here for the first time, I'm not sure, amnesia consciousness. <laughs> because when we, when we forget who we are and we're in this amnesia consciousness, uh, what we do, we, we tend to cut ourselves off of our truth. And we, not only that, we lock our, our thought process into all kinds of negative stuff. And so everything we're experiencing is a reflection of that. Um, one of the things that, uh, when I was uh, younger, a lot younger, when I was a principal of a school, uh, I had this student, his name was Mike, I'll never forget him or his mother. He became, by the way, a professional football player and was very good. But anyway, he used to always get into fights. And, um, Every, it seems like almost on a weekly basis, he'd be sent to the office by the yard duty supervisor saying he got in this fight, this and that, and then they'd eventually send him home or whatever if he couldn't handle a day. So finally I sat down one day and I said, you know, Mike, aren't you getting tired of having to come here to, this, to the principal's office and be sent home? Aren't you tired of this? And he said, what do you have in mind? <laughs> and I said, I said, I've observed you uh, for a while. And uh, I notice that when you go out in a playground, you've got this frown on your face, you're angry, well, I don't know what you're angry at, and you're, you're projecting this negative stuff, 
And so people come up to you and they want to take a poke at you. I said, let's try something new. And he says, what do you have in mind? I said, why don't you go out there and, and pretend that you love life, that you're, you're, you love the weather and it's nice and you're alive, and, and that you've got a ton of friends and not all these people want to take a book at you. Why don't you do that? Try it for a while. So he did. He tried it for several weeks because I never saw him again unless I went to the playground. But uh, we had an open house one day and his mother comes up to me, who was a dear friend. I actually gave her my car when I was through with a car. I said, hey, you can have my car. But anyway, that's a long story. Uh, so anyway, she came up and she said, Angie, what did you do to Mike? He's easy to get around at home now. He's not getting picking fights and arguments. He's really doing well. So what does that tell us? Yes, yes. Our experiences tell us how we feel about ourselves. And he totally changed. So that's a universal truth. And another thing, and which points out that it's important, if this is true, it's important, Angela, for you to start developing something better if you want to experience something better. Anyway, the second truth that I want to deal with today, and uh, it has to do with that, uh, that which we see, we see things not as they are, but we see them as we are. A universal truth. We all, we know this, don't we? We learned that. Um, our attitude, it's funny, our attitude and, and uh, how we relate to our friends, how, how we think about relations, how we think about things, actually has a direct relationship to how we view things. I know, and I, I know that, uh, we, and mystics call this, anybody remember what mystics call this? The law, the law of separate realities. You know, have you ever gone to some place with a friend or a relative, a concert or a movie, or here at one of our concerts, and afterwards you have a dialogue as to what was experienced? It's almost as if they were not in the same room with you. I remember in Connie smiling back there when I was a school superintendent, I had to do the negotiations with the union. My gosh, we have a session. And, and, and I thought it was pretty positive. And then the rumor, I had friends in, in the group, they come and say, Angel, did you really walk out of, the, out of this meeting mad? I said, really? They were at some meeting that I was mad. Because we, we have a different perspective of what's going on. So we see things based on our own emotions, based on how we think about things, our own relationships with ourselves. And a lot of it, our therapist is in the front row here, Sandy can tell you, that we develop ideas before we're even six years old. And if, if we have an angry parent or a parent is not a very good parent and they put you down and say, you'll never amount to anything, you know? That goes directly into the subconscious mind and is buried there as a truth. So we're always, uh, Fulton and Jean, Jay Sheen made this state once and I'm skipping ahead of myself because it's supposed to be someplace else in my talk. <laughs> but he said, we all make our own weather. We, we, we make our own skies and we make our own, uh, our own rain and, and snow in the emotional world that we live in. We all make it. So we do create that. Uh, that. And uh, just to give you an idea of this, uh, there's a story that I love. And it's about these, uh, these people who travel. And we used to do a lot of traveling things through there. Emerson Stella used to head all this stuff up. It's pretty good. But the, this uh, group of travelers uh, uh, were taken to a quarry. And the idea was to just get an idea of what goes on in Cory. So a good small group of them went up to the first uh, stone cutter, and he looked kind of ornery. And they, they had a simple question. The leader said, uh, and what are you doing now? What are you creating? And he gets upset. He looks back and he says, I'm cutting a stone. <laughs> and then he goes back to work and dismisses them. So they go to the second stone cutter, and, and they asked him the same question. What are you doing? What are you creating? He says, I am taking this block of stone and I've got to cut it so that it's square and that it fits into a particular place that they have on the wall. Oh, that's cool. He goes to the third stone, stone cutter. The guy's, he's from Italy. The guy's all excited, he's out of his mind. He's, you know, hey, oh my gosh, you're asking me, oh, this is wonderful. He says, he said, and you ask me what I'm doing and what I'm creating. He says, I'm creating a cathedral. Wow. And then he spends the next 15 to 20 minutes describing what this cathedral is going to look like when he's done. Isn't that cool? Clap for this guy. Yeah. 
Being that we see things as we are and not as they are, presents some very important situations here when we start looking about uh, em embracing some kind of a self-image. If I do not see myself as part of this universal creativity, but I see myself as a victim or I look at things in the negative. I see that there are many people who they look at a rose and they see the bugs. <laughs> you know, my God, that rose has a bug in it. Bug. If, if we're doing this, we have a serious problem on our hands. <laughs> and thank God here at PLC, we don't buy new stuff. But we need to review it just to remind ourselves. But anyway, the, the situation here is that every one of us have, are confronted with on unexpected things that happen any given day. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. And sometimes those situations, if I'm not connected to my power, those situations absorb me. I actually make myself vulnerable to everything that's going on in the day. You know, I imagine you had at least three things happen to you on the way over here. Or at least when you got up this morning, we have these unexpected issues that come up. And if we don't have what I consider a good feeling about who and what we are, uh, then we, we are vulnerable and we open ourselves up to a lot of, a lot of grief. And uh, so anyway, anything can trigger an angel. I know that. I've got an emotional background here because I'm a guy and a former Marine. But I realized this through our belief system, and we thought that, Angelo, do you want to be vulnerable to every situation that happens to you, to where you get sucked into a drama? I'll give you a, a case in point that happened to me. I'm in my, I, I, I'm a pilot, I'm into my Cessna 170, and one day I wanted to do a spin, you know, and so I uh, took the plane over uh, in the Mojave Desert to Barstow. And God, what a beautiful day. The sun was shining. It was so wonderful. Oh, God, I'm just enjoying this day so much. And then I find myself, those of you who are pilots, I found myself in what? At the Mojave Desert. What? A sandstorm. A huge sandstorm. Talk about an unexpected. And I'm a very positive person most of the time. But all of a sudden, I found the, 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 my life, uh, my emotional life, just sucked out of me. And there for that moment, I was in fear. I couldn't believe it. And then the conditioned mind, you know how it works, it's over. My God, you're going to die. <laughs> this, you know. And then I thought, oh my goodness, uh, this sand's going to destroy my engine and I'm going to do this and that. And I can't see where I'm going, where I'm flying, and, and all this stuff. And so finally, and that's what the unexpected happenings. And we have that almost on a daily basis, don't we? You know, you have your own storms. And um, so we were watching TV one day, and they showed this, a real huge storm going into Phoenix. Did anybody witness that? My God. And what was shocking to me is the fact that it came up so suddenly, and it was so fast, and I was at 1,500 feet of elevation. And so what does our conditioned mind do to Angela? I started beating myself up. You know, you're not paying attention. You shouldn't be in this plane. You're not, you're while looking at the view. You should have been aware of this, blah, blah, blah. And finally, um, uh, in those days, uh, my Catholicism kicked in, and I, I did the Lord's Prayer. I didn't do it in Aramaic, though. <laughs> and, but I, and I, I did a little prayer, and oh, gosh, this stuff works. I found myself pulling back on the stick, climbing to